Okay, so picture this. You're cruising down a beach in Rio, mm -hmm. right? Sun's out. You've got the wind in your hair, and you're in a Chinese electric car. Definitely not the first image that comes to mind. I know, right? <laughs> it's a bit of a surprise. But it's actually the reality in Brazil today. Yeah. BYD is really making name for themselves down there. Exactly. So we're going to take a deep dive into how BYD is electrifying the Brazilian car market. Should be fascinating. I mean, their growth has been incredible. Absolutely. We're going off this article from China Daily. And what's really interesting is this isn't just about cars. Right. It's way bigger than that. It is. It's a glimpse into the future of transportation, like globally. And how perceptions of Chinese technology are changing. Totally. Okay. And maybe even a peek at a new world order. Wow. Now you're getting ambitious. It's a story with big implications for sure. And we're seeing those play out right now in Brazil. Exactly. So let's imagine ourselves in Barra da Tijuca. Okay. Fancy beach neighborhood in Rio. Yeah, exactly. And that's where BYD is set up shop. Interesting choice. I wouldn't think a beach town would be the first place for an EV push. Yeah, it's not your typical car dealership scene at all. So what's it like? Well, forget what you think you know about dealerships, okay? Mm -hmm. This is families, couples, business professionals. Ah, so they're going for that whole lifestyle vibe. Totally. It's more about an experience than just buying a car. Smart. Makes sense given the whole EV thing is still new and maybe a little intimidating for some people. Definitely. And the guy leading this whole thing is Marcus Vinicius. He's the director of this BYD dealership. Okay. And what's he like? Well, he's completely sold on BYD. He's even thinking about getting one for his kid. Wow. That's commitment. Yeah. He's all in. Mm. And he talks about how dynamic Chinese companies are these days. Interesting. Because that perception hasn't always been there. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And he even visited BYD headquarters in Shenzhen. So he's seen the operation firsthand. He has. And you can just feel the excitement in his words, about that cultural exchange. Yeah, the meeting of the minds across continents. And that excitement is translating into serious numbers. Oh, yeah. BYD's growth in Brazil has been amazing. Explosive is more like it. It went from 100 dealerships in May to a projected 250 by the end of the year. Whoa, that's doubling their presence in just month. That's a serious expansion strategy. And they're clearly confident about the Brazilian market. So what about sales? Are people actually buying these cars? Oh, yeah. Big time. They sold 58,690 units between January and October. Wow. And how does that compare to last year? It's a 227% increase. Okay. So we're not talking about a small jump. That's massive. Absolutely. And to put that in perspective, they're now the 10th best-selling car brand in Brazil overall. So they're not just competing. They're becoming major players. They're completely changing the game. Mm -hmm. And that begs the question, what's driving this success? Is it just that EVs are new and exciting, or is there something more to it? Yeah, good question. To really understand, I think we need to hear from the people buying these cars. Absolutely. Yeah. So we've got Victor Satiro. He used to own an Audi. Okay, so he's not exactly your average car buyer. Definitely not. But he decided to ditch his German car and go for a BYD. What made him switch? Saving money on fuel. It was a friend's recommendation that convinced him. Interesting. Word of mouth is powerful. It really is. Mm -hmm. Especially when it comes to something as big as buying a car. Right. It shows a growing trust in the brand and in the technology. For sure. And then we have Ejenor Madrado. He was a Kia guy. Okay. Another interesting case. So what made him switch to BYD? He took a BYD hybrid for a test drive and was instantly sold. He loved the modern design, the affordability, the whole package. So it ticked all the boxes. And what's interesting about Madrado is he's a mechanical engineer with a doctorate. Wow. So he knows his stuff. Exactly. And he's visited China multiple times. So he has a deep understanding of both the car industry and China's tech scene. And he actually told this really interesting story about almost getting hit by a bicycle in Beijing back in 1998. Okay. And I'm guessing that doesn't happen too much anymore? Nope. Now the streets are full of cars. Wow. Yeah. That really highlights how quickly China has developed. It does, especially in areas like transportation. It's a perfect example of how China has moved from being the world's factory to a leader in innovation. Exactly. And especially in fields like EVs and renewable energy. Right. And now they're exporting that expertise to the world. So now the question is, what does this mean for a country like Brazil that's embracing this change? Yeah. Is it just about economics or is there something deeper going, some kind of cultural or geopolitical shift? That's what we need to unpack because this isn't just about shiny new cars and impressive sales figures. We need to look beyond the surface to understand the bigger forces at play. 
This is a partnership with global implications, and it's worth exploring what both sides stand to gain from it. You're saying this seemingly simple story of a Chinese car company taking over Brazil is actually a window into something much bigger. Exactly. And to understand that bigger picture, we need to dive deeper into BYD's strategy, their technology, and their ambitions, because this is just the beginning of the story. And it's a story that could completely reshape how we think about transportation. Buckle up, because this deep dive is just getting started. I think for Brazil, this partnership with BYD is a huge opportunity yeah. to become a major player in this whole EV revolution. Makes sense. And BYD isn't just selling cars there. They're setting up local production, creating jobs, pumping money into the Brazilian economy. So it's a win-win. Brazil gets an economic boost and access to cutting-edge tech, and BYD gets a foothold in a huge emerging market. Exactly. But some people might say it sounds a little one-sided. Right. Like, China's getting the better end of the deal. Yeah, that's a valid concern. Is this going to lead to economic dependence on China? Maybe even political influence? Tough questions. Brazil says they're being pragmatic, you know, partnering with companies that help them reach their goals. Makes sense, no matter where those companies come from. Exactly. They see this as a chance to jumpstart their own EV industry and secure their energy future. Smart move. Thinking long term. Yeah. It's not just about buying cars. It's about strategic advantage in a world that's changing fast. Yeah. And speaking of strategy, one thing that really impressed me about BYD is their vertical integration. Oh, yeah. That's huge. They control the whole process. Batteries, motors, the final car. That's a game changer. It sets them apart from a lot of the traditional car companies. In what way? Well, it gives them massive control over costs and efficiency. Right. They can streamline production, optimize resources, respond to the market quickly. It's a model that's working really well. And other companies are taking notice. So they've kind of cracked the code for sustainable transportation. Yeah. And they're bringing that to Brazil. But is it really about sharing knowledge or is it more about market dominance? Let's be real. BYD is a business. Mm -hmm. Their goal is to make money, but their success is definitely pushing the whole industry forward. Oh, yeah. They're driving innovation, forcing their competitors to up their game. Okay. And ultimately making EVs more accessible to everyone. Right. So let's bring it back to the average person. Someone listening to this right now who might be thinking about buying their next car. How does all of this affect them? Well, think about it. You have more options than ever before. You're not limited to those same old car brands anymore. Yeah, I mean, the market is changing so fast. Exactly. You can make a choice that reflects your value. Like sustainability. Exactly. Or affordability. Or maybe you just want the latest tech. So it's not just about the car itself. It's about consumer power. Right. You have the power to choose products that align with your priorities. That's pretty cool. But with all this excitement around BYD and the EV revolution, there are still some challenges, right? Oh, for sure. We can't just magically switch everyone over to electric cars overnight. What's the biggest hurdle? Range anxiety. Makes sense. People are worried about running out of battery before they reach their destination. Especially in a country like Brazil with those huge distances and not always a lot of charging stations. So how do we get over that? Battery tech. It's getting better all the time. Well, batteries are becoming more powerful, more efficient, and cheaper. We're seeing huge breakthroughs in solid-state batteries. Okay, I've heard of those. What's so special about them? They offer even greater range and faster charging times. They're key to getting rid of that range anxiety and making EVs a realistic option for everyone. But even with amazing batteries, we still need the infrastructure to support all these EVs. You're telling me we need charging stations everywhere. Convenient, reliable, accessible to everyone. Exactly. It's not enough to just have a few charging stations sprinkled around. Right. They need to be in the right places. Exactly. Workplaces, shopping malls, apartment buildings, along highways. That's a massive undertaking. It is. But governments and private companies are investing heavily in building this infrastructure. Although we still have a long way to go. It makes me think about something Marcus Vinicius said. Remember the BYD dealership director? Yeah, the one who's so into BYD he wants to get one for his kid. Exactly. He said he thinks his son will also own a Chinese EV one day. Interesting. What do you think he meant by that? I think it shows how this trend is shaping the future. We're talking about a whole generation that will grow up with EVs as the normal thing. That's a powerful thought. It's not just about tech or economics, it's a cultural shift. The idea of what a car is, where it comes from, what it represents, it's all changing. And that's going to have a huge impact on society as a whole.
So BYD's success in Brazil is just one piece of a much bigger story. A story about innovation and ambition and how global power is shifting. And as we move into the next chapter of this story. We have to ask ourselves some tough questions. Like what? Like what are the long-term consequences of this move to EVs? How will it affect the global economy, the environment, our everyday lives? Those are big questions. Yeah. And questions we'll be exploring as we continue our deep dive. Stay tuned. It's going to get interesting. Yeah, it really makes you wonder. Uh-huh. What happens to the big car companies, the ones that have been around forever? Can they adapt to this new world, or are we going to see some major shakeups in the car market? It's a big question. Right, yeah. The global car industry is worth trillions of dollars. And this shift to EVs is happening faster than anyone expected. So for the companies that are slow to change, what's at stake? I mean, what could happen? I think they risk becoming irrelevant. Wow. Consumers, especially younger people, want brands that feel innovative, sustainable. Right. They want to feel like they're part of the solution. Exactly. And if those traditional car makers don't make EVs that people actually want, they're going to get left behind. So some of those brands we all grew up with, they might not even be around in a few years. It's possible. We're already seeing some of them struggle to keep up. It's a reminder that no company is too big to fail. Right. Even the giants can fall if they don't adapt. Mm. So what are some of the things we should be watching for? What are the signs that this EV revolution is really taking hold? Well, battery technology is key. Right. We talked about range anxiety being a big barrier. Exactly. Mm. And those new solid state batteries, they could be the answer. Yeah. They promise longer range, faster charging. And they're safer too. So for someone like me who's always on the move, I need to know I can get where I'm going without worrying about running out of power. And those improvements in battery tech are happening so fast. We're seeing breakthroughs all the time. And the cost of batteries is coming down, too. That's great news. As batteries get cheaper and more efficient, EVs will become more appealing to more people. But even with the best batteries, we still need places to charge them. Absolutely. We need a huge network of charging stations that are easy to use and everywhere. It's like you wouldn't buy a gas car if there weren't gas stations everywhere. Exactly. Charging infrastructure is crucial. And we're seeing a lot of investment in this area from both governments and companies. That's good to hear. But are we there yet? Not quite. We need to make sure those charging stations are in the right places using the same technology yeah. and that the whole charging process is quick and simple. So there's still some challenges to overcome. There are. But I think what we're seeing with BYD in Brazil shows that this shift is happening. Companies are innovating. Consumers are on board and governments are supporting it. It's a complex system. But the future is definitely electric. And this transition isn't just happening in Brazil, it's global. China, Europe, the US, everywhere. EVs are gaining momentum. And as this trend accelerates, it's gonna have a huge impact on our world. So what started as a story about a Chinese car company shaking things up in Brazil has turned into a much bigger conversation. About the future of transportation, how the world is changing, and the choices we all have to make. It's a reminder that we're living in a time of incredible change and the decisions we make today will shape the future. So next time you see a car, think about where it came from, the energy that powers it, the technology that connects it. It's all part of a bigger picture, a story that's still being written. And the question is, what role will you play in that story? Thanks for joining us on this deep dive.